crew members. This is the Abingdon Company channel and my name is Abingdon. I am the owner of the Abingdon Watch Company and we make adventurous watches for adventurous women. I like to get my hands into some of my customers' watches and change batteries, see what some of the issues are that we see coming in through our repair system. It's a service that we always offer our customers, so I can do very basic watch repair, battery changes, links, uh, cleanings, um, and also just kind of troubleshoot some of the things that uh, a customer might send their watch in. So that is what we are going to do today. I'm gonna go through a few watches, and part of it is to also show you how easy it is to either change battery or um, remove a link, resize your watch, so on and so forth. Hopefully you guys get a little bit out of this video. You have uh, some newfound knowledge and you can see kind of what we do. If there is anything that is outside of my skill level, I definitely make note and uh, send it to our watch repair. Being around watches now for over a decade, I really do enjoy them. I think that they are fantastic small machines, little mechanical machines that are either battery operated or not based on what type of movement you have. So hopefully uh, you do like this video and if you want to join our crew, you will be able to uh, click the subscribe button check out some of our other stuff we do a lot of highlighting of different women in the field and most of our customers that are super adventurous flying airplanes scuba diving all that kind of fun stuff so I hope you like our channel so let's get our hands dirty let's get started my workstation I have a couple of my tools out but paste back remover link remover very pointy pliers couple things to pry um, I also have a brush for cleaning uh, when I do remove a case back, I, I like to place plastic over it just to protect the case back from any slipping and, and not scratching. Um, and then I've got all my batteries over here. These are little, uh, little dead batteries that um, I do not use on customer watches. So, um, this customer wanted to get a fresh battery. Uh, we did that uh, several days ago, have been monitoring it, everything looks like it's working perfectly. And then uh, she also wanted to put a leather band on it. So this is our old style of band, which is not removable as easily as our new style, which you don't need any tools for. So I'm gonna just kind of help her out and um, change the band for her before we ship it out. Pretty easy stuff. So first thing I will do, get that out of the way. Unlatch our buckle and I have already cleaned it I've already changed the battery and right now we're just doing an aesthetic change I use a tiny plier and um, reach inside the end link to get the spring bar out from its hole placement Spring bars are used a lot in watches. Uh, spring bar is just kind of like a toilet paper roll holder. So it, both ends of the bar will um, uh, spring in like so. So each side you can push in. And then what they do is they will sit inside the holes of the lugs. And whenever you're buying a band, uh, you want to make sure that the band width fits those lugs. So they call this space your lug width, but it's the uh, width. If you're looking for a band, what we use is we use two sizes only, the 20 millimeter band and actually the 16 millimeter, which is the watch I'm wearing. Um, all of our watches will either take a 20 mil or a 16 mil leather band. And this here is a 20 mil. The neat thing about these bands is we put a little, uh, what they call like a quick release on the back side, so you don't need a tool to put it in. And then I've done just a, a small detail where I've labeled um, one end six and then the other end 12. It's a little difficult to see um, since it's uh, embossed into the back leather, but uh, this is gonna go on the six o'clock end. So I'll put the one side in first and then here for the click. There we go. And that's secure. And here's the second one. Oh, that one got in right away. So absolutely beautiful. 
matches it nicely. And then I'm gonna put the band back together and seal up the ends because these spring bars down here at the bottom can just slide out really easy and then you can start to lose pieces and I don't want to have that happen for her. So I will end up wrapping these all together and then securing it with a piece of tape. And that way we don't have loose parts flying all over the boxes when we ship this back. A lot of this stuff that I'm doing too is just kind of best practices that I've picked up over the years. So if you see that I'm doing something and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's doing something like that, um, definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, this is um, learning for everybody. So I'm gonna set this watch aside. This watch is Dunzo's and we'll move on to the next one. Um, I can already tell this is the first edition of our watch when we came out in 2007. So this box is very old and kind of cool to see that uh, we've got a customer sending one in after so long. So we'll see what the issue is. I will get into that in a second here. And it says, problem details, please replace the battery gasket inside if needed and replace the band with a new black band uh, with Abingdon on the buckle. Thank you. Okay, well this sounds pretty, pretty good. So I'll first start off writing some of their information, customer initials, and looks like we're probably not gonna need a ticket number if it's just basic like this and the watch is in good working order, I'm not gonna need to um, send it off to our watch repair. I could probably just take care of all of this. Um, wow, this is amazing. This right here is, a, is kind of a relic. Uh, we used to do paper manuals and um, we don't do these anymore. Now all of our manuals are videos online, so that's pretty cool. And let's take a look. Okay, so we have an Abingdon. Now, if you've seen me do repairs, you know that we have a checklist system that we always use uh, whenever we are dealing with a repair. So just looking at it, it looks like it's in good condition. Definitely is going to be needing a cleaning. Um, the second hand isn't moving, so yes, a battery change will be necessary. And uh, if all looks well, we can put a new strap on it, monitor it for three days, and if it's working perfectly, then we'll ship it back out, easy peasy. So, this has not come in for a repair before. All right, so let's clean the watch. Okay, whew, this is not one of our bands. Dakota, interesting. Yeah, with leather bands, it's really something that uh, a lot of people get surprised at if they've if they've never if they typically wear steel bands and or metal bands and not leathers is this is a genuine material so it's going to wear out after a while it's going to you know see the breakage right here all of that I mean this is a, it's an animal hide so it will wear out I'm gonna take off this band I can already see that the case back is going to need some serious cleaning so we are gonna be using our jewelry cleaner and definitely our brush um, and probably also a soft cloth too. So let's get in here. Uh, now, because this is not a band I'm familiar with, I am assuming that they used a spring bar. This band is really tough. I love it though when you see this kind of thing because it really means that the customer is wearing the watch, they're going outside with it, they're getting dirty with it, they're definitely getting a lot of use out of it. These are built to withstand the elements, so it's great when I see a watch come in like this. I wonder what kind of movement this is gonna be, because with our original version of Amelia, we used a Miyota movement, and um, I wasn't a fan of it. Um, and I'll show you why when we set the watch, um, if this is that old style. But we ended up changing to a Ronda movement in uh, 2014 and um, much, much more robust movement for a dual time. Cool. Let's open it up. And I would rather put a band on here just to, 
I like to have a little bit of leverage. I can get a better grip on the watch when I take the case back off. All right, so crown's coming out. And I don't know why, but keeping it in my hand always has been a better grip for me. I know a lot of watch repairs, they have just different ways that they do it, but for me, I have never slipped on a case back when I, uh, when I keep the watch in my hand. Other methods that I've tried, I have, so I just don't do those anymore. I do the one that works for me. Um, so I am seeing a lot of skin cells and just like dirt and things that are coming out of the case back and I want to kind of brush those away before I expose the inside because I would hate to have anything fall into there. I have a uh, compressed air that I can use to get it out, but you know, why push it? So, all right, this is interesting. This note here from a watch repair, you can see it says they put in a five-year battery, um, expires 922.19. So uh, I'm gonna take a look at what battery, I don't know who FF151 is, that's not us. We always put TAC for the Abingdon Co. So they went and got their battery changed somewhere else, but I'm glad they put that note in and they put the expiration date, which was, just last year, so it makes sense that the battery is not working. All right, but the gasket actually looks in really good shape. The movement holder, this is our old Miyota movement. This I'm gonna clean out and I'm gonna uh, re-lube with the gasket. And then we're going to uh, put everything back in, put a fresh battery in, close it up, and see that everything's working. So just to get some of that stuff out, you can kind of see it's just loosening it up and what you want to do is you want to wipe it towards the outside never in line with the gasket and of course never on the inside and unless you're doing like a full-on overhaul taking the movement out and everything there is no reason why you can't just do like a dry clean so we have it open I'm going to put just a slight amount of pressure down while I lift out the gasket. I'm sorry, the movement holder, that's what this is. Not a gasket, gasket's already out. This movement holder does two things. One, it keeps the movement obviously in place, and then two, it holds the battery down. So there is that. It's using a Renata 364. Uh, one thing I do prefer to do is to take out batteries and put in batteries with tools. Um, I don't like putting my fingerprints in the movement, on the movement, just because oils and dirt and whatever else you have on your hands, you can't get that stuck inside. So, old battery, new batteries, also Reynata. Um, I have a preference towards Energizer, but uh, 364 batteries are not what we commonly use since this is an old movement um, and we stopped producing or stopped putting in our watches. So we still keep some of these on hand. Um, but uh, when I when I buy our next batch of uh, 364 batteries, I am most likely going to be buying Energizers. All right. Cool, so batteries in, and movement holder looks good. No cracks or anything there. And line it up, and then you'll kind of feel it lock into place. Okay, good deal. Uh, I'm gonna reload this off camera because we have a, a different place that we do that in and I will come right back place the um, gasket in and close her up so it is lubed and we're just, I think I actually twisted it so I am going to twist it some more How about that? there we go okay cool and our case backs have a nice groove that the gasket sits in. I found out recently that some watches just don't do that. If this is not behaving, I'm gonna get a new gasket. 
which it is not behaving. So I'm gonna get a new gasket. All right, I'm over it. New gasket, new gasket, okay. version one. Okay. Again, go over lube, come back, try number two. Okay. Excellent. All right. Since we put in a new battery, I'm going to make a note on here previous guy and I'm gonna cross that out. Oh, gosh, she took up a lot of space. Um, TAC and the date, month, and year. Excellent. All right. Old gasket, don't need that anymore. Moment of truth. Pop it in. Let's see if she works. <gasps> like magic. No, not really. It's just electricity. But there we go. Actually, it looks really cool with this band. Um, great. So I'm going to pull that out. And then while I'm actually here, I just want to make sure the E6B rotates nicely as well in both directions. That is working very well. Excellent. OK. Glove back on, case back protector, plastic sleeve over, and see that? That's why I put a plastic remover over this, for exactly that reason. So it protects the case back. Perfect. Okay, Zulu time right now is an eight hour difference, so if it is 1600 here plus eight um that's 24 15 so it's midnight um zulu midnight 15 zulu so here's a funny thing about this movement the red arrow points to the 24 hour numbers on the inside and those so funny this watch is so old those what those numbers used to be red now they're very faded out red um, but you want to actually set the red hand first before you set your local hand see how it kind of does that little wobble kind of crazy right it goes backwards it goes forwards it goes backwards it goes forwards it would trip out um, watch repairers that were handling their watches. We knew that it was okay, it was totally fine, but um, people were like, oh, my watch is broken, and it was, it was not happening for people. Push that in, everything's ticking well. I'm gonna take this band off, so I remember to uh, put a fresh black band on, which I'm actually gonna do right now, and then we can set this watch aside for observation. Six for the six o'clock side. And 12 for the 12 o'clock side. Like new. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. Awesome. So this is good. Let me get my checklist out, make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, that's there. This I'm going to be using. Thank you, band, for letting me borrow you. Cleaner. Tools, tools, checklist. All right, so we did clean watch. We changed the battery. We did a quality control. Um, I am going to make a note here. It should be no, um, but I'm not gonna check anything right now. I'm just gonna make a note to look at the Zulu hand because it didn't seem like it was li uh, lining up perfectly. Um, I do know this customer. She is in our system. Um, uh, updating any tags. I'll take a look at that. And I, I remember when they bought the watch. So um, did they include the $20 shipping for return? Yes, they did. And did they send it in their own box? Yes, they did. 
and it was a white box. Uh, send customer watch number two, I will do that offline and then a uh, complete repair ticket we do not need to do. Um, all right, communicate with, with watch repair, that's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna go down here and say we set it at 16, 15 on 1, 22, oh, 20. And then I'm also going to put the Zulu time, which was uh, GMT 24, 15. So that we can keep an eye on the Zulu time as well, since this is a dual time zone watch. Cool. Done. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me as I was repairing a few of my customers' watches. I hope that I was able to impart some knowledge and uh, show you a thing or two about basic watch maintenance and repair. If you do like these and like what I'm doing here with, with watches or even just the channel in general and all of the different adventurous lifestyles that we are highlighting, definitely join the crew, subscribe below, and please come back, watch another one. I am always surprised by the boxes that I open and the watches that I end up repairing. Uh, sometimes they're simple battery changes, sometimes they're simple cleanings, band changes. It's a different story every day. So uh, I really enjoy this though. It's one of my passions and it's one of the favorite things that I like to do when running a watch company is to get into some of these watches and see what the issues are so that I can make a better watch later on down the road. So thank you so much for joining. And if you do like these, like I said, subscribe below, join the crew, because ladies, it's time.